Amidst the cosmic symphony of archetypes emerges the nurturer, a celestial guardian of compassion and solace. A mystical presence, she embodies the essence of maternal warmth and unconditional love. Like the tender embrace of a celestial constellation cradling the universe in her arms. In the gentle luminescence of moonlit nights, the nurturer finds her sanctuary drawing from the ethereal energies to heal and nurture those in need. Her soothing aura radiates a celestial glow guiding lost souls back to the path of healing and growth. With each whispered word, her voice resonates with the wisdom of ancient stars, imparting the secrets of nurturing and care to all who seek her divine counsel. She dances amidst the celestial melodies of empathy, offering comfort and solace to the wounded hearts that cross her path. The nurturer's heart is a cosmic garden blooming with the seeds of compassion she sows in the heart of others. In her sacred presence, vulnerabilities are celebrated and souls find solace in the nurturing embrace of her grace. Yet as she navigates the ethereal realm of empathy, the nurturer must also tend to her own celestial essence. In the vastness of her compassion, she may find herself overwhelmed by the weight of others' emotions. Thus she seeks refuge in the astral sanctum, replenishing her divine energies under the watchful gaze of distant stars. As she traverses the mystical cosmos, the nurturer stands as a divine beacon illuminating the sacred path of compassion and care for all who seek celestial light. She orchestrates a harmonious dance of healing, forever weaving a luminous tapestry of love and solace for those who find peace in her presence. Today we're talking about the nurturer. The nurturer is wrapping up the last archetype on the maven journey. The nurturer is typically described as something similar to the mother archetype that that Carl Jung uh, depicted in his in his works of the definition of a whole plethora of archetypes. The nurturer is definitely something that is all about that mothering essence of compassion and love towards others. I see the nurturer as someone who truly is here to, to see themselves as this figure standing with arms wide open, ready to embrace anything and anyone that, that comes in their path. To me, the nurturer is, is someone who is standing there ready, who's ready for all of it, who's ready to to accept and to hold and to heal and to help other people see that and allow them to create a space where they can feel comfortable in that understanding for themselves and know that it's okay to be where you are and to sit in that space where you are in that moment. The nurturer really cultivates a level of compassion which is the the guiding principle in the way that they interact with others they they really make a point out of trying to understand the struggles and emotions and can truly listen with uh, open heart and ear similar to the empath the nurturer is still a listener and still someone who can can be open in order to receive the things that they are receiving However, the nurturer is all about the growth as well. They can be a pillar of support for anyone in need and offer encouragement and understanding and actual assistance, practical assistance in order to, to help the people that they come in contact with, to, to steer them in the right direction, to help them overcome challenges and work towards their desires and their goals that they wish to achieve. They, they also create a, a space, an environment of trust and safety. They want people to feel safe with them. They want people to feel secure and, 
and understand that they are in that safe space, that loving space, so that others can open up and express themselves authentically. Because we know how vulnerable we can be when we're in those throes of our emotions, when we're in those those big feeling moments and trying to find someone who understands what we're talking about or someone who understands what we're going through can be something that is truly difficult for anyone to open up and let go and to understand that those pers- that those people are there to to facilitate that support for us because most people have had some sort of experience where they have maybe not felt listened to they have not felt safe they've not felt secure maybe they have found the courage to to open up or to share a part of themselves with someone else and to be thrown back in their face or fallen on flat ears or faced with a situation or an experience that just exacerbated the situation a nurturer also guides you towards your own personal healing and your own personal growth and movement towards being able to see that to allow you to find a space where you can recognize those things within yourself to share with you the things that they have learned along the way that may help you on your journey to to show you that there is more than just this limited support around you that once you are open to it there's there's so much out there that's available to anyone if they want that help when they're on that journey when they when they do need that healing or they wish to step into empowerment the nurture really encourages people to explore their own strengths and potentials while still providing that space for them to to nurture their growth we know that no one can heal you or tell you the the things you need to hear or the answers that you want right now or tell you exactly what you need to do a good healer a good coach a good mentor a good supporter is going to guide you towards the things to allow you to make your own choices for you to find the things that are going to work for you in a way that that feels good and a way that is going to facilitate that growth that you want nurturers also need to nurture their selves they need to have a high level of self-care self-acceptance and self-compassion it's easy to place our care concern or love towards other people but we need to start with ourselves we need to work on all of those things within ourselves first to to understand our own emotions to understand our own needs to understand our own space to know what it means to nurture ourselves we can't help other people to to find a place where they do need the support of a nurturer if if the person who is doing the nurturing does not how to do it for themselves they need to start with themselves and part of that does include setting the boundaries and a lot of these qualities are very similar to the empath because the boundaries are important setting up those boundaries helps to ensure that the nurturing is balanced and sustainable and to understand the the importance of self-preservation first and to not become overburdened with the emotional needs of others a level of authenticity is also needed as a nurturer there has to be a part of the nurturer within you that is truly authentic to who you are not recycling the information that may that you may have learned from someone else or something that you have heard someone else speak it's very important to to find your own voice within that that pure authenticity of who you are in a way that you want to show compassion and the way that you connect with other people you may do shadow work or inner child healing or deep levels of 
opening for yourself and in ways that you can support other people with that. Because we know that when we're nurturing people, when we're dealing with the emotional strains of others, they come from experiences or beliefs that they are still holding within themselves. By creating a space where you are able to identify that, that childlike quality or those, those inner demons within yourself and within other people will, will really allow you to be able to create a strong foundation in the way that you do nurture others. Being a nurturer is definitely a mentorship role. It is somewhere where you are not being just a pillar of support or someone who is sharing not that knowledge, but you are also that person who is really showing someone else the, the journey you have led, the, the path that you have created, the way that you have moved through something. It gives those people around you in your, in your space the, the visualization of seeing what it could be like if they followed their own path and followed their own journey and use those skills and ideas to help them on their own growth to facilitate and bring forward the things that they truly want because you'll also encourage and celebrate the growth of those people and watching them succeed, watching them move towards the things that they want and seeing them release those layers of themselves will, will help you as well on your own journey because we never get to the end. If we did, there's no point to our existence anymore. So allowing us to create that space where we are still facilitating assistance and support for others on their journey that is helping us on our journey and we are just deepening our own knowings and understandings and removing any more layers that we may have that want to be eliminated or absorbed because of all of these archetypes that we bring on all these feelings that we hold into the the nurturer is the one that is continuing to expand it's the one that's going to give you that true feeling and knowing of everything that you've learned so that you you can move towards that self-mastery you are fostering a a positive impact on the people around you and nurturing others growth and self-awareness it's your own compassion support and understanding where you can create those deeper connections with other people and and forge these meaningful relationships which then allows you to contribute to a more empathetic and caring world. When you embrace the nurturer within, it can lead to such a profound transformation in both you as a person and your interaction with others, which in turn can only allow you to find a more fulfilling and enriching life journey. And as the nurturer is, is the last archetype in the maven series in the the maven journey to self mastery this is this is where i just want to sum up the archetypes and sort of bring them all together a little bit the way that i have brought in the maven is something that is personal for me is something that i have found represented the feelings and experiences of my own personal journey towards self-mastery. I believe that as a physical human in this 3D realm with no solidity to understanding our, our creative being or the purpose of why we're here or why the universe exists or how it was created with with so many possibilities and unanswered questions the only place i can come from with any truth is to understand that right now while i am speaking to you i am a physical human being living on this earth in this reality that i believe is is real and true for me right now 
part of that journey of me being this physical being in this reality and being able to see things, feel things, know things, understand things and experience things has allowed me to become aware to the different emotions and the different ways we interact and communicate and experience with the world and with the people around us. The maven for me was a word that came to me a few months ago and this is how I find my own journey grows is where I receive my own intuition through through words or symbols or ideas they come in multiple ways in multiple uh, different types of, of ways where they just it's all here or it's these tiny little bits over a period of time but the maven was something that did grow over a few months and as I've been able to embody these archetypes it's really allowed me to deepen my own understanding of the key personal emotions, feelings, experiences and outward manifestations that have happened for me on this this journey to to really understanding who I am. For when I first started it was more about manifesting and try and create things into my reality because I wasn't happy with the person I was, I wasn't happy in the life that I was living and I wasn't happy with the experiences around me. So part of that journey first was to try and manifest money, to try and create a different life. And obviously we know that that's not the answer and that's that's a, a long story, but the journey has led me now here to understand that it's more about understanding who we are on our own without any outside influence without anyone else telling us what our mission is what we're here to do what we are made up of what our birth chart is telling that us any of those things if we just drop all of that just for a moment and just realize that we are this physical being right now that has its own thoughts and its own feelings and its own ideas of what's true and what's not and yes that will change it constantly changes my I can change a thought on the flip of a coin because I think all answers are right there's there is nothing that we can all agree on that is 100% correct in the way that we answer any question. So when you get into that space of knowing that there are so many possibilities, it can sometimes be difficult to try and find a place for us to exist when we don't have any solidity or foundational pieces to who we are. So the Maven journey is me discovering more layers of that, more understanding of who I am and what I'm experiencing, what I'm bringing into my life and how I'm feeling, what's, what's my body doing. So the Maven is made up of five archetypes. I've, I've created a space where I believe these five archetypes have been the, the most predominant uh, figures that we can use our little logical brains to understand this journey so we start with the mentor and I don't know if you've noticed but the five archetypes are all based on the letters of the word maven so m-a-v-e-n is the five different archetypes and that's how I've sort of created it so the m is for the mentor so the mentor is is the initiation to us finding our own self-mastery. We are a mentor, not in the sense where we just mentor to others. We're a mentor to ourselves. Because I truly believe that all the answer lies within us. It's just the level of us being able to unlock it. So unleashing the archetype and allowing that part of us to grow is that mentor within ourselves that's allowing us to discover more of ourselves by believing that we are already that by knowing that we're already the mentor that we would love to have in our existence but finding that as a place within that leads us on to the artist which is 
which is the creativity. It's the the part of us that expresses the things that we create on our journey towards being a maven, where we express our ways in different material formations which give out a level of who we are in that moment and what we've learnt, what we're embodying, what we can assist people with. And then we move on to the visionary because the visionary is what's going to strive us towards things. Using the artist in a way that we create things The visionary is the one who's going to lead us towards those things. It's through the the ideas that we get, those intuitive hits, those desires, those thoughts of creating something new or endless possibilities which, which give us that vision, which allows the artist to create it in order to truly see who we are and allow ourselves to express ourselves. The empath then connects us to the other experiences and people and feelings and things around us, which gives us another layer of a space for us to create because we can use our emotions and the way that we heal ourselves and the way that we see those emotions within others in order to allow us to express ourselves which leads us to the nurturer and the nurturer is the one who's going to allow all this to happen they're sharing that information with others they're creating a space for other people to come into their world and they're showing people the possibilities they're allowing things to grow and build and that's how the five work together that's how I exist in this space right now is is knowing that I'm on my own self-discovery to my own self-mastery where this this is a world that I have created this is a world that I believe in this is my world this is my experience and everything I do towards that is me experiencing things in order for me to find the truest version of who I am without without trying to be like anyone else, without taking on information or knowledge from other people or creating things based on what other people have done, but understanding the the wealth of knowledge and experience and things that we can create and do and the emotions we can feel and experience and share and we create in order to facilitate all of that to happen. When we allow those desires and those intuitive hits to to move us towards those creation states, to step forward into those things that we want, that's where we get to do all those other things. That's where those, those shadows or beliefs or those emotions or those blockages or those experiences will appear in order for us to look at, to, to accept, to experience, to reject, absorb, to look at, which then further enhances our own experience and allows us to grow into something else, into something more. And it's this continual process which is part of our self-mastery, which is part of this human as this physical being who is who is experiencing this right now. It's it's all there is for me is a journey to self-mastery and along the way I'm going to create things, I'm going to feel things, I'm going to experience things and they are all going to help me towards that deeper, 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 deeper level of who I am because there can't be any other goal than that because we're all individual and yes, we're part of a community. Yes, we have so many other things going on around us that we can connect to, but it's all part of our experience. It's all part of us understanding how we interact, how we experience, how we feel. But it's through doing those things that allows us to truly grow. And I hope you have truly enjoyed the the Maven journey, which was something where I just wanted to create a space that opened up your own mind and your own idea into your own Maven journey and to see if 
any of this resonates within you to help you unlock your own mastery in in self in allowing more creativity and more experiences to come into your world in order for you to really create the life you want and start to enjoy and accept and love and just be in everything that happens around you because who knows what happens at the end of it because there's endless there's endless answers to that as well and we are never going to truly know the answer until we get there so in the meantime we may as well enjoy it so keep creating keep experiencing and just keep unlocking those those new levels and layers of who you truly are